Hey guys, um, so I'm kind of going to record this section just in case because I don't know what's going to happen this afternoon with the snowstorm. So anyway, I'm just going to pick up in chapter 12 where we left off, uh, section 12.2 on page 8. Alright, so this section is about inverse functions and composite functions. Uh, the objectives in general determine if a function is one-to-one. -one. Find the inverse of a one-to-one -one function. Graph a function and its inverse. And um, find the composition of two functions. Alright, so let's just start by defining an inverse relation. An inverse relation is basically uh, when you just interchange the coordinates of the ordered pairs in a relation. Then you get the inverse relation. So in other words, you just literally swap the x and y coordinates. Okay, Swap the x and y coordinates of each ordered pair. It's really just that simple. So for example, if we had a relation that's just made up of these four ordered pairs, 0, 1, 1, 3, 2, negative 2, and 3, 5, then the inverse relation would be if I literally just swap each of the pairs. So 0, 1 becomes 1, 0. I'm just swapping the x and y. 1, 3 becomes 3, 1. Uh, 2, negative 2 becomes negative 2, comma 2. And 3, 5 becomes 5, comma 3. Alright. So let's go ahead and plot. First of all, let's plot F. Okay. So that is the point 0, comma 1. 1 comma 3, 2 comma negative 2, and 3 comma 5. Okay, so again the red is F. And then let's plot the inverse points in blue. So that's 1 comma 0. 3 comma 1, negative 2 comma 2, and 5 comma 3. Okay, so this is the inverse in blue. Okay, and just so you know, this line that is already plotted on here is the line y equals x. Okay, just a parent linear function. So what I want you to notice is that the inverse relation is a mirror image across that line y equals x. It is symmetric across that line. So in other words, each of these points is directly across that line y equals x Okay, from its inverse point. And that will always be the case for a relation and its inverse. All right, let me go on to the next page. So, one to one functions. We want to be able to find the inverse of a function. And the inverse of a function is just another function. Okay, So let's say we have a particular function f of x. Its inverse function is called f, and then it's a superscript, minus 1. Or more formally, f minus 1 of x. That's just the notation. That's how you write 
an inverse function. And just to be clear, it does not mean 1 over f. Okay, this just specifically means an inverse function. Okay, but a function only has an inverse if it is a one to one function. Okay, only if it is a one to one function. One to one means that each x has a unique y. Its own y. Okay? Or in other words, we can't have more than one x going to the same y. All right, so the important results here are if a function f is not one to one, then it does not have an inverse, and f inverse does not exist. All right. Okay, I'm going to erase all that and scooch down. Um, so this is a really good figure. I think it's not from our book. I think it's actually from our pre-calc book. But I think it is. Um, it clearly shows some of these definitions. So here is a one-to-one fun one -one function. Okay. So each y corresponds to only one x. So we got one x going to one y, one x going to one y, and so on. Okay. So now here is an example of something that is not a one-to-one -one function. So in the problem here is we have an x going to a y, but then we have another x going to the same y. Okay, so that is what makes this not one-to-one. -one. Therefore, this would not have an inverse. Okay, or over here, something that is not even a function, and we learned this earlier in the quarter, is if you have one x going to more than one y, then that's not even a function. Okay. All right, going to go on to the next page. So how to determine if a function is one to one? Well, if you happen to have a graph of the function, then it is extremely easy to determine um, simply by using what's called the horizontal line test. Okay, If you draw a horizontal line and if it intersects the graph more than once, then the function is not one-to-one. -one, and therefore, its inverse is not a function. It doesn't have an inverse. So here's um, a function. It's a cubic polynomial, x cubed minus 2x squared plus 2. But let's say we draw a horizontal line through it at about y equals 1. So I'll try my best to draw a straight line here. And it's going pretty well. All right. So again, that's at about y equals 1. Okay. Notice when we do that, that that horizontal line intersects the graph of the function at three different places. So what that means, if we bring this down to x, down to x, oops, I meant to draw a straight line down down to x, what that means is that there are actually three different x values, whatever those x values are, and all three of those are going to the same y value, okay? which happened to be about y equals 1. 
Okay, And if you look back at the figure on the previous page, that's exactly the definition of something that is not a one-to-one -one function. You have different x values all corresponding to the same y value. So in other words, this function fails the horizontal line test. Therefore, this function does not have an inverse. Okay, So just looking at the graph of a function is a very easy way to tell whether or not it is one-to-one. -one. So in a lot of cases, you should just be able to use your knowledge of different types of functions to determine whether or not they will be one-to-one, -one, whether or not they will have an inverse. So let me uh, scooch to the next page. Let me just make this a little smaller so I can fit the whole page. So there's a lot of uh, different types of functions that we have looked at in this class. Um, so what I would do if we're in class is just pause for a couple minutes and let you guys go ahead and just make a very rough, rough sketch of each of the following types of functions. So go ahead and pause if you want. Um, linear, quadratic, absolute value, square root, and exponential, all of which we have looked at during this class, you should be able to just make a very rough sketch and then determine whether or not that type of function is one-to-one -one or not. So go ahead and pause if you want to try that on your own. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead. So a linear function, basically just a straight line. A quadratic function, of course, is going to be a parabola. An absolute value function is going to be some kind of a V-shape. A square root function, like just plain old square root of x is something like this. And most recently, we've looked at exponential functions. Um, if I look at an exponential growth function, it would look something like this. So then for each of these, if we think about applying the horizontal line test, okay, um, a linear function is always going to be one-to-one. -one. So yes, it is one-to-one. -one. Quadratic, a parabola, no, it's never going to be one-to-one because -one your horizontal line is always going to intersect it in two places. So that's a no. Absolute value, same as the parabola. Horizontal line is always going to intersect it in two places. So no, it's never going to be one to one. A square root function, yep, it's always going to be one to one. Therefore, it's always going to have an inverse. And an exponential function, yes. Okay. It's always going to be one-to-one, -one. therefore, it's always going to have an inverse. All right, I'm going to go on to the next page. All right, so once uh, we have determined that a function is one-to-one, -one, then there's two things we're going to uh, do. First of all, how do we sketch the graph of the inverse function? And then second of all, how do we analytically find the equation of the inverse function? So actually sketching a graph of an inverse function is easy, uh, like we did a couple pages ago. You don't even need the equation because all you have to do is just reverse the ordered pairs. from the graph. Okay, So here is a graph of a one-to-one -one function and we can tell that it's one-to-one -one because if you were to draw a horizontal line at any point it would only intersect it in one place. So what we can do is identify the ordered pairs 
um, that are marked from this function. So for example, this first one over here looks like it's negative 4, negative 3. Sorry, that's a negative sign. Um, this looks like it's 0, comma, negative 1. All right, this one is 1, comma, 0. And this one is 3, comma, 1. All right. So we're just going to reverse each of those ordered pairs. So the first one then will become negative 3, comma, negative 4. Uh, the next one will become negative 1, comma, 0. The next one will become 0, comma, 1. And finally, this one will become 1, comma, 3. All right, so let's go ahead and plot each of those. Uh, negative 3, negative 4 is here. Uh, negative 1, comma, 0 is here. 0, comma, 1 is here. And 1, comma, 3 is here. And then since this is just a straight line function, we can go ahead and connect each of those with straight lines like that, like that, like that. And again, you can see, again, I've got the line y equals x plotted here, that each of these is symmetric over the line y equals x. Okay. All right, I'm going to go on to the next page. How to actually find the inverse of a one-to-one -one function. So we just did a graphic solution, but now we're talking about analytically finding the equation of an inverse function. So here's the method as is described in the book. Uh, if a function f is one-to-one, -one, a formula for its inverse can be found as follows. Replace f of x with y. Okay, these two things mean the same thing, exactly the same thing. y is f of x. And then interchange, or I always call it swap, x and y, that gives us the inverse relation, and then solve for y. Um, and I'll, I'll walk through an example here and show you what all this means. And then we replace y with f inverse of x. Okay. So here's an example. Here's our function f of x equals 1 half x minus 3. Now we know, just from looking at it, that is a linear function. Therefore, we know that it is 1 to 1, and it has an inverse. Okay, So we rewrite it first. This is step number 1. Just replace that f of x with y. So in other words, just write it as y equals 1 half x minus 3. Okay, step number 2. Exchange the x and the y. So in other words, this becomes x and this becomes y. So x equals 1 half y minus 3. Okay, And that is the inverse function. But we don't normally write our equations like that, x equals stuff. We normally write y equals stuff. Okay, so that's why in the third step we want to solve that equation for y. y equals what? So just simple algebra at this point. Um, start by adding 3 to both sides. See, I'm going to add 3. I'm going to add 3. 
Okay. So we're going to have x plus 3 equals 1 half y. Okay, so I don't want one half y, I want just y. So therefore the next step is multiply both sides by 2. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this side by 2 and I'm going to multiply this whole side by 2. Okay, so now we're going to end up with 2x plus 6 equals y. Or, you know, if I just reverse that, y equals 2x plus 6. Okay. And then finally, step number 4 up here, just replace the y with f inverse of x. So in other words, the inverse of function f is equal to 2x plus 6. All right, so let's plot the function and its inverse on the next page, and then we can verify graphically that indeed they are inverses. All right, I'm going to go on to the next page. Okay, so f of x equals 1 half x minus 3. Let's start by plotting that one. Um, and again, I have the line y equals x already plotted here. All right, so I'm just going to plot this using the intercept and slope method. So the intercept is negative 3. The y-intercept is negative 3. And then the slope, m, is equal to 1 half. So in other words, go up 1 and over 2. So here's my next point. Go up 1 and over 2. So here's my next point, and so on. Or I could go down 1 and back 2. Down 1 and back 2. Down 1 and back 2. OK, and so on. So this is our function f of x. All right. Okay, and we just on the previous page found our inverse function, which is 2x plus 6. Okay, so I'm going to use the same method. The intercept, the y-intercept is 6. That's here. And the slope is positive 2. So in other words, up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Or I could go down 2, back 1. Down 2, back 1. And so on. Okay, so that's where they cross. All right, and then we could kind of draw a straight line through those points. All right, so my graph is not amazing, but you can see, you know, as we saw before, that each of these points is straight across from its uh, point on the original function, okay? All right, let me pause here for a second. All right, so uh, let's look at one more example here of how to take a function and analytically find its inverse. All right, so this is f of x equals 2x minus 1 over 5x plus 3, find the inverse. Okay, same first step as before, uh, replace the f of x with y. So we're just going to rewrite that as y equals 2x minus 1 
over 5x plus 3. And same second step as before, we're going to now just exchange the x and the y. And in this case, we have two instances of x, so they're both going to turn into a y. So this is going to become, I'm just going to come out here so I have more room, uh, x equals 2y minus 1 over... 5y plus 3. Okay, And same third step as before. Uh, now we want to algebraically solve this equation for y. Because again, this is the inverse, but we have x equals stuff. And what we really want to have is y equals stuff. Alright, so this uh, you know, requires a little more algebra. And the technique here is we need to get rid of this denominator. So we're going to multiply both sides by the expression 5y plus 3. All right, so then I'm also going to multiply this side by the expression 5y plus 3. All right, so on the right-hand side here, then these two expressions just cancel each other out. And on the left-hand side, what we want to do is distribute this multiplication. All right, so on the left-hand side, then, we're going to end up with 5xy plus 3x. And then we have equals, and then what we're left with over here is just 2y minus 1. Okay. Now, if you'll notice, we have a y here and a y here. And remember, the whole goal is to end up with y equals stuff. So the next step in the technique is we have to get those y terms on the same side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 5xy from both sides. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 5xy. And at the same time, just so we can be a little efficient here, then we want to move the other stuff to the other side. So let's go ahead and add the 1 to both sides. And then let's see what we end up with. On this side, I'm going to end up with 3x plus 1. And then on this side, I'm going to end up with 2y minus 5xy. All right, so now we've got the y's exactly where we want them on the same side. And the next step in the technique is on that right-hand side, we want to factor out a y because, again, we want to get y by itself. So nothing's going to change here. 3x plus 1 equals, and then I'm going to factor out the y, and then times what's left, 2, minus 5x. All right, so we've got 3x plus 1 equals y times the quantity 2 minus 5x. And then there's only one step left to isolate the y, which is just now divide both sides by 2 minus 5x. 2 minus 5x. Because on this side, now that expression cancels out, and I'm just left with y. All right, I'm going to come up and over here. So now what we've got is y equals this 3x plus 1 
over 2 minus 5x. Okay. So that's it. That's the inverse. And then the last step, which I looks like I forgot to put it on here, is then just write it in the inverse notation, which would just be writing f inverse of x equals, and then the same thing, 3x plus 1 over 2 minus 5x. So that's our inverse. OK, I'm going to go on to the next page. And uh, just have a summary of important stuff about inverse functions. So again, inverse functions undo each other, so they essentially just reverse the ordered pairs. xy becomes the ordered pair y comma x. That is the simplest possible definition of an inverse function. Uh, second thing, only one to one functions have an inverse. Uh, the easiest way to determine if a function has an inverse is by using the horizontal line test and also just by using your knowledge of the type of function and whether that type of function uh, is one to one. And also we saw that the graph of a function and its inverse are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. Okay. All right, so I'm going to pause for a minute. Um, I think I have three problems for you guys to work on. And I'm just telling you that these are one to one. Find the inverse function for each. So this is a linear function, uh, a cube root function, and then um, this one is most like the last example that I just did. So pause and please uh, take a few minutes and try to solve these yourself, and then I'll come back and go through the solutions. All right, so let me start uh, with number one. So we're going to start by replacing this with y. So y equals negative 7 eighths x plus 2. All right, next step is exchange uh, the x's and y's. So we're going to have x equals negative 7 eighths y plus 2. And now we want to solve for y equals stuff. So first step, subtract two, the 2 from both sides. So we have x minus 2 equals negative 7 eighths y. All right. Then we want to get rid of that negative 7 eighths multiplier. And the way to do that is to multiply by its reciprocal, which is negative 8 over 7. So we need to multiply both sides by negative 8 sevenths. Whoops, I meant to put that there, of course. So this and this cancel, so then we're just left with y equals, and then over here we have negative 8 sevenths times the quantity x minus 2. And I noticed when I checked this in the back of the book, that they actually left the answer in this form. They didn't multiply it out. And again, you know, that's the same as f inverse of x. Now, I personally would have gone ahead and multiplied this out 
which would have given you negative 8 sevenths times x. And then minus times a minus, it's going to turn into a plus 16 sevenths. So just be aware, you know, this and this obviously are equivalent. Uh, be on the lookout for different forms of answers just so you make sure that you recognize that you got the right answer. All right, so in either case, uh, this is the inverse function. All right, I'm going to go on to the next page. Okay, number two. And this one is actually um, much easier than it looks. Uh, let's start by replacing f of x with y. Okay, so y equals the cube root of x minus 4. All right, swap the x and the y. So the inverse function is x equals the cube root of y minus 4. And now we need to solve this for y equals stuff. So we need to get this out from underneath the cube root. And the way to do that is just to do the inverse of this. Uh, the opposite of taking the cube root is cubing it. So in other words, I need to cube the whole equation. Okay. So now that's going to give us x cubed equals, so the cube root cubed is just the stuff. All right, so it just equals y minus 4. And then obviously the last step is to just add 4 to both sides of the equation. So we're going to end up with y equals, and I'm adding 4, x cubed plus 4. Okay. That is the inverse. And if we write it with the inverse notation, f inverse of x equals x cubed plus 4. Okay. All right, I'm going to erase and scooch down a little. Okay, last one. f of x equals 1 over x minus 8. All right, rewrite y equals 1 over x minus 8. Swap the x and the y. So x equals 1 over y minus 8. All right, so the y is in the denominator. We need to get it out of there. So let's multiply both sides by the expression y minus 8. Just like that. OK, so on the right-hand side, these expressions cancel, which is what we wanted. So we're left with y minus 8 times x equals just 1 is all we have left on the right-hand side. And I want to get this y by itself. So in this case, I'm not going to multiply this in because all we have to do is just divide both sides by x. Because here, now the x's cancel out. So now we've got y minus 8 equals 1 over x. And then to get last step to get that y by itself is just add 8 to both sides. So in other words, y equals 1 over x plus 8. 
okay, or f inverse of x equals same thing, 1 over x plus 8. All right, so last uh, topic for this section is composite functions. All right, so here's a definition. The composition of two functions means that you combine two functions by substituting one function's formula in place of each x in the other function's formula. So. Let's say we have two functions, f of x and g of x. All right, so the composition of functions f and g can be written as this, f of g of x, or f of g of x or just plain f of g. So this symbol is just a little um, circle like a degree symbol. Like if you were going to say it's 25 degrees f out today. When you write temperatures you write the little circle up as a superscript. When you write uh, composition, it's just right there at the same level. Okay. So what it means, f of g, and also I'm saying f of g, but you could also read it as f composite g or f composed with g. Those are all basically the same thing. What it means, use the expression for the second function, in this case g of x, as the input. Or as the x that goes into the first function, f of x. So in other words, when we see f composite g, I always rewrite it immediately as this. It means f of g of x. To me this just makes more sense. Where the g of x then has become the x in f of x. You just take that whole function and you substitute it in for x in f of x. All right, and then on the bottom half here, this is just the opposite. We were just talking about the composition of f and g. Now we're doing the opposite the composition of g and f. Okay, So same thing here is how it's written. g composed with f of x or g composed with f of x or just g composed with f, g of f means use the expression for f of x as the input or in other words as the x that goes into the function. So in this case when we do g composed with f we are doing g of f of x. So same thing, this time the function f of x acts 
as the x. We just substituted it. Okay. And just to comment down here that order is important because composition of functions is not commutative. In other words, f composed with g is usually not equal to g composed with f. And you'll see that when we do an example on the next page. All right, I'm going to go on, erase and go on to the next page. Okay, let's look at a couple of examples. So we have uh, two functions, f of x equals 4x plus 3, g of x equals 2x squared minus 5. And let's start by finding f of g of x, f composed with g. Okay. So again, what this means is we want to do f of g of x. And we want to find what that composite function is. So we want to use g of x as the x in f. So in other words, I'm going to take this whole expression for g of x and I am going to substitute it in to the x in f of x. All right, so f of g of x is going to be 4 times, all right, so now for x, I'm going to substitute in this entire function, 2x squared minus 5, and then we have the plus 3. All right. Okay. So, and then we just want to simplify this by distributing the multiplication. So we're going to have 8x squared. And then 4 times minus 5 is going to be minus 20. And then we still have the plus 3. And then last step, let's just, we can combine these two uh, constants. So we're going to have 8x squared. And then negative 20 plus 3 is going to be uh, negative 17. So that's it. That is equal to f composed with g. All right, now let's do it uh, the other way. We want to do G composed with F. All right, let me uh, erase a couple things here. So to do G composed with F, now I want to do G of F of X. So in other words, now f of x is going to become the x that goes into the g function. So this is going to get substituted for x in g of x. Okay. So in other words, I need to do 2 times x squared. Well, x is now 4x plus 3. So 4x plus 3 quantity squared. And then we have minus 5. Okay. All right. So 4x plus 3 quantity squared. Let's just write it out. So it's going to be 2 times 4x plus 3 
times 4x plus 3 and then we still have the minus 5 at the end. All right, so we're going to have two times and now to do this we just need to FOIL them. All right, so we got 4x times 4x, that's 16x squared. Now let's do a couple steps here and combine them. We have 4x times 3 for the outer, that's 12x, and we have 3 times 4x for the inner, that's another 12x, so that makes 24x. Then for the last, we have 3 times 3, so that's plus 9. Okay, end of the parens, and then the minus 5. Okay, I'm going to move over to the side here and then switch back to red so you can see it. Because now what we need to do is distribute this multiplication of the 2 out in front. So 2 times 16x squared is 32x squared. And then 2 times the plus 24x is plus 48x. And then the 2 times the plus 9 is plus 18. And then we still have minus 5 at the end. And the last step is we can combine the 18 minus 5. So we're going to end up with 32x squared plus 48x and then plus 13. Okay, so that's basically the final answer. That is equal to G composed with F. All right, I'm going to pause for a second and then scooch down. Okay, so let me do uh, just one more example where f of x equals 1 over x squared, g of x equals x minus 1. So if we want to do f composed with g, in other words, we want to do f of g of x, So that just means take the g of x and plug it in for x in f of x. All right, so in other words, I'm going to do 1 over and I'm going to substitute this in. Quantity x minus 1 squared. Okay, so that's basically it. And then we can just simplify it a little by multiplying that out. So 1 over, all right, uh, so if you think of x minus 1 squared just means x minus 1 times x minus 1. All right, so we've got x squared. And then we've got minus x minus another x, so in other words, minus 2x. And then when we do the last, negative 1 times negative 1 turns into plus 1. And that's it. So that is f composed with g. Okay, now we want to do the reverse g composed with f. All right, so in this case, uh, let me erase this and this. In this case, I want to take f and substitute it in 
for the x in g of x. So g of f of x is equal to, so just substitute this in. So in other words, 1 over x squared minus 1. And that's it. Okay. So um, a practice problem for you guys. Here's two functions, f of x and g of x. So pause this for a minute and go ahead and try to find f of g of x and g of f of x. Okay, pause it, try that on your own, and then I'll come back in a moment with the answers. All right, so the for the first one, uh, we want to do f composed with g. So in other words, we want to do f of g of x. So we want to take g of x and substitute it in for x. All right, so it's just going to be equal to 2 minus there's the 2 minus, and then let's be careful to put parens around x, which now has become 2x squared plus 1. All right, we need those parens because then we want to distribute the subtraction to both of those terms. All right, so we're going to end up with 2 minus 2x squared. and then also minus 1. So let's see, we can combine the 2 minus 1. And let's just put the x squared term first. So that will be negative 2x squared. And then 2 minus 1 is just 1, so plus 1. And that's it f composed with g is negative 2x squared plus 1. Okay, uh, g composed with f. So in this case, we want to do g of f of x. And let me erase up here. So in this case, I want to take f of x and substitute it in for the x here. All right, so we're going to have 2 times, and then it's x squared. So I need to do like this because I'm going to substitute in 2 minus x. So we want to do this squared and then plus 1. Okay. All right, so again, here we need to multiply this out. 2 minus x times 2 minus x. Let me just come over here and do that part. So 2 minus x times 2 minus x. I'm just going to FOIL that. So we get 4, and then we're going to have minus 2x minus another 2x. So that's going to be minus 4x. And then the last, minus x times minus x, that's going to turn into plus x squared. So that is what the 2 minus x squared equals. So let's uh, come down here. So we've got 2 times that. So 2 times 4 minus 4x plus x squared. And then we still have this plus 1. All right, so 
we need to distribute this multiplication here. So I've got 8 minus 8x plus 2x squared. And then we still have this plus 1 at the end. So then we can combine our constant terms, the 8 plus 1, and then just put everything in the right order. So it's going to be 2x squared minus 8x and plus 9. And that's it. Okay, So that equals g composed with f. All right. That is it for now. I'll talk to you guys later.